Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be mounting a modern two-point sling to my rifle. <clears throat> now you're looking at this rifle probably thinking to yourself, uh, hey Boomer, you got a sling on there already. And I do, but this would not be a modern two-point sling. So this is the GI Web Sling uh, in use by the U.S. Army from about the mid to late 20th century. And the reason I have this sling on here is because I've used this rifle primarily for Project Appleseed, which is a positional shooting program. And that's the sling they recommend. Now this sling is phenomenal for that type of shooting uh, because it makes a wonderful shooting aid. Uh, it allows you to connect the rifle to your body in those various positions. Uh, the sling takes up the weight of the rifle, allowing your muscles to relax and you can shoot more accurately. So, for example, uh, I can use this sling as a hasty sling. Or, I can disconnect the J-hook from the butt stock, and I can make myself a loop. And this sling becomes a very effective loop sling. So for that type of positional shooting, um, this sling's phenomenal. Uh, so you figure Project Appleseed, uh, CMP or NRA high power, th this sling's great. If you haven't had the opportunity to try one out and you get it, uh, I highly recommend it. You'll be amazed at how much stability and confidence that sling, when properly used, uh, can add to your shooting. Now, unfortunately, in a defensive encounter or maybe in a combat environment, uh, chances are good that you're not going to have the time to properly deploy this sling. So that advantage is pretty much negated. Now, where this sling really fails is in securing the rifle to your body when you're not shooting. So if any of you served in the Army in the 80s and the 90s, you probably remember uh, in garrison going to sling arms, right? And maybe you marched around like that and it's fine, you know, it's a lot easier than carrying it at port arms. Uh, but if you were in the field, in a tactical environment, you didn't do that, right? You typically carried it at low port arms. And now you're ready for action. But the problem is, if you've ever carried what you probably think is a lightweight rifle for 12 miles, um, that lightweight rifle becomes pretty obnoxious after 12 miles, right? It's dangling at the end of your arms, and that sling is doing nothing. It's just dangling down there, right? So all of the weight is on your arms. Now, you can play games and adjust your magazine pouches to where some of the weight is resting on your hips, but, you know, it's just not a good way to carry uh, the rifle. And then, whenever you get where you're going... You know, maybe you need to set up the perimeter, or uh, maybe you're just getting chow, so, you know, you go ahead and you go to sling arms again. But the problem is, it's not secured to your body very well. So you end up with it falling off your shoulder, you're trying to do stuff with your other hand, and it's obnoxious. Now, you can sling the weapon to, the, to your back with this type of sling. But usually to do that, you're going to have to lengthen the sling. Lengthening this sling is not the easiest thing to do. Um, and then trying to get it back off of your back to get into action it takes even longer. Um, it's just not a convenient sling to use for those purposes. So that's why I want to mount a modern two-point sling to this rifle which is engineered to solve all of those problems. Now, the difficulty I have with this particular rifle is that it has a fixed stock on it. 
And a two point, a modern two point sling, typically is gonna be mounted to the firing hand side of the stock. And as you can see, there's no way to mount a sling to the firing hand of this stock. So, what I'm gonna be doing in this video is I'm going to be putting a quick detach um, cup. I'm going to embed it in this stock. Okay, so I went ahead and disassembled my AR. I've got the lower out here separate on a little selection of tools that I think I might need and we'll see how it goes. Maybe I won't need all this and maybe I'll need more. Um, as far as what I'm installing, so I've got the Viking Tactic Sling, the VTAC Original, right? And then so I've got a QD swivel from Troy Industries. And what I'm actually going to embed in the stock is this QD flush mount um, cup from Noveski. So now, as you probably know, these fixed AR stocks are hollow. Um, and I could get to the inside of it by opening up the little door on the butt plate. But instead, I think I'm just gonna take these two screws out and remove the stock from the lower so that I have better access to um, the cavity inside the stock. So it's just a flat tip screwdriver. I'll go ahead and take those two screws out. Now I will say, you need to use caution when doing this because Get that bottom one out and the sling swivel. Um, there's actually a spring and a detent in this channel right here. And that actually holds the uh, takedown pin in place. So when you remove the stock, that spring wants to come out of there. So you kind of got to be careful when you take that apart. All right, so. Now that spring is right in here. So as I slide this back, see the spring comes out. So now I can just slide this off. And the buffer tube. Now there is a spacer and there's the spacer that goes on the end of the buffer tube. So I'm gonna set that aside and try to just leave that detent and spring in there. All right, so that gives me the stock, makes it easier to get inside of and work on. Now, a little bit of an issue here, as many of you probably know, there is like a foam material inside of AR stocks. And the difficulty I think is going to be is that's probably too thick um, for this to get all the way through and then get the nut on. And even if it wasn't, I don't know that the nut would bite securely into that foam. It would probably compress over time and come loose. So I suspect what I'm going to have to do is clearance out some of that with a razor knife. Uh, but we'll see what happens when we get to that point. So the firing hand side of the stock is over here. And I'm gonna want the hole to be probably somewhere around in the middle, uh, primarily for aesthetic reasons. Now, with this stock, you've really gotta be careful not to go too high. Um, that's the biggest danger because you don't wanna get into the buffer tube. Obviously, that would be bad. Uh, but if I put it somewhere in the middle, like right around in here, um, that's centered on that cavity, so that should be good. All right, ah, let's drill a hole. Now I suspect that if I just dig right in with a half inch bit, it's liable to tear into this plastic and make a mess out of the hole. So I'm gonna start with a, a little eighth inch bit, step it up a little bit, and then we'll go to the full size uh, half inch bit. So let's see how that works. And I'm gonna keep the speed on slow to hopefully not overheat the plastic. So let's see what we can do here. All right. All right. 
right next size up all right well I think it just clearanced out <laughs> a big chunk of that foam for me and it made a nice goober on the stock too well that's not pretty so hopefully the flange on that cup will cover most of that up and let's see what that foam looks like on the inside yeah took quite a chunk out of that foam well I knew I was gonna end up having to clearance that out anyway probably so <laughs> did a lot of it for me should be fine all right now if we look on the back side obviously that foam is in the way of the nut so i think i'm going to clean that up a little bit with a razor well it's not super pretty but i think the nut should fit in that gap there may not be able to get a wrench on it but oh yeah yeah that should work all right now they recommend red loctite on this but i don't happen to have red loctite but i've got blue so i'm going to put some blue on it now this nut it's actually got, I don't know if you can see it, that it's got little spikes in the corners. And those spikes go up against the inside of the stock and dig into it. So the idea would be to hold this in place inside the stock with the wrench and screw the cup down into it. And then this would be drawn up into the stock and those little spikes would dig in and uh, give it a secure hold. If you tried to spin this nut on the inside, those little spikes would cut a groove in the stock and kind of defeat the purpose. So that's what I'm gonna do. And like I said, I'll use, I'll use the, uh, the quick detach to uh, spin this end of it and I'll try to get the wrench on the nut and use that to hold the other side. But before I do it, it's actually got some sort of Loctite on it to begin with. Um, I'm just gonna add some blue Loctite, a couple of drops to it before I run it in there. get the little pointy things facing up stick it under there and go to town oh yeah that pulled it up nicely so now if you look the corners of that nut have actually sunk into the stock. So I'm just going to snug it up a little bit more beyond that and call it good. Okay, that's, that's plenty tight. All right. All right, so I cleaned up some of that mess. Um, set the the butt stock aside and let it set up for a little bit um, and this is the upper so as you can tell I've got a uh, a QD mount here um, on the Picatinny rail on the bottom of this quad rail um, and I just need to move that over to the support side rail now I'm not a hundred percent sure where I'm gonna want it at on this rail 
Um, most people I've seen have recommended having the front part of the sling out as far as possible. So I think I'm going to start with it out here on the end of the rail. And then once I get the sling on there and adjust it up, I can see how that works out. And if I need to, I can actually move it back as necessary. So let's go ahead and take that off. And I can't remember who I got this from. Troy, Troy Industries says so right on it. I think I ordered it from uh, Midway. It's a nice little piece. And it's going to go back on here. And then I'm going to use the quick detach off of the old sling. So I got to get that removed. So that'll be the forward part of the sling. And then what I just put on the buttstock will be the back part. Okay, so that is the upper done. So obviously that's probably going to have to set up overnight before it's fully cured. Uh, but boy, that's it feels pretty solid in there. I don't think it's going anywhere. Yeah, so it's not the prettiest install in the world on the inside for sure. Now the outside doesn't look too bad. Uh, luckily that flange covered up that little gank I put in there when I drilled the hole. Yeah, so it's not too bad at all. All right, so let's put her back together again. So we need to get our lower back over here, preferably without losing our detent and spring. And the spacer. That goes on the end of the, the buffer tube. And we can slide this guy back on there again. Careful not to bend that spring over. And that's good. And now I can put the butt plate on there. And I'll tighten that down a little bit more in a minute. Now, this rear uh, sling attachment, it actually has the threads in it for that bottom, the toe screw. So I have to use this. Um, I'd like to get rid of this. So maybe at some point I'll pull this off and take a, a cutoff wheel or a grinder and cut that loop off of there. But for now, I'm just going to leave it on there. So it just slips in that slot and then the screw actually threads into those threads. And these are probably a couple of screws that a little bit of Loctite might not go amiss on, but haven't had it on there before and they didn't come loose, so for now I'm just going to leave them alone. All right, so there's that back together again. Um, now, this rear cup is interesting in that there's no swivel in this cup at all, not even a quarter turn. There's individual little divots that those balls lock into. So wherever you put it in, that's where it stays aligned. So I'll have to figure out the best um, alignment for it. That's probably pretty good right there. Which it is. Let's do a function check. So we're on safe. We're good. Fire. I got a cookie. And reset. So we're good to go. All right, so there it is. All right, so I want this sling adjusted for use with my body armor. <clears throat> so I went ahead and put my body armor on. Um, I also already installed the, uh, the swivels on the ends of the sling. 
Uh, nothing special to getting those on there, just a few buckles. Now I will say with this sling, sometimes it can be tricky to figure out which side is which. Um, so if you go to the middle of it and you find the quick adjust buckle, right here, um, and then you go down and you find the part that they call the free running end, so this piece here, um, that is the side that attaches to the front of the rifle and then the other side attaches to the butt. So I'll go ahead and get that attached to the rifle and we'll start checking the adjustment on it. Alright, so I got the sling on the rifle. Uh, it's attached to the the new flush mount uh, attachment on the buttstock and it's attached to the support side of the forearm. And now I need to get to adjusting on it. Now, I have it run out uh, as far as it can go for the quick adjust part. <clears throat> Just to make it easy to get in and out of for now. Um, but the first thing you need to adjust with this is um, the length up here on the butt side has to be long enough that it puts the rapid adjust buckle um, or the quick adjust buckle within reach of your support hand. And right now, the way it is, I cannot reach it. So if you look, it's sort of back there behind my armpit, and there's no way I can get to it. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is lengthen the, uh, the buttstock side of the sling. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. All right, so I've lengthened it up a little bit, and um, so now I actually can reach the uh, quick adjust buckle. Um, so I can tighten it up now. And that's as tight as it goes right there. Um, it's pretty good. It's got it held pretty snugly to my body. Um, I can get the rifle into action. No problem. Um, if I loosen it, I can swim out and I can switch shoulders. I can either do a bump switch. Not that I can see through my scope like that. Or I can switch hands as well. And the key there is it's not choking me. Right, and that's part of why we mounted it on this side of the stock. Right. So we're good there. Now I will say, this guy right here, that back sling swivel that I wanted to get rid of, when I come back over, it's hooking on the sling. So that has got to go for sure. Um, but other than that, it's working really good. Swim back in. I can tighten her back down again, and away we go. So as far as shooting goes, I think it's good. Uh, now, if you need to put it on your back for climbing or whatever, um, you can loosen it up. And unswim your left arm, your support arm. Swim back in with your firing arm. Slide it around to your back. Tighten it up. And you're ready to climb. And it's secured pretty well to your back. It's not going anywhere. Um, to get it back out of there again, you can just loosen it up. Reverse the operation, swim back through. And you can go back to shooting and eventually swim this arm back through as well. Yeah, so I mean it it's gonna take me some getting used to it um, like I said I've never had a sling like this but uh, seems to work all right it definitely secures the weapon in my body better than um, that GI web sling did this stupid thing back here has got to go it's hooking on everything so as soon as I get a chance, I'm going to buzz that right off of there because 
that's a pain in the butt. Other than that, uh, yeah, it's a great sling. It was a little bit of a hassle to mount because of having to put this cup in the stock up here. But other than that, um, it's just a matter of learning how to use it and getting used to shooting the rifle and moving um, with the sling on. So uh, thanks again for dropping by and uh, have a great day.